Hey, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. I'm Bill Macbeth, and this is what, the seventh episode? I've been on a uh, major hiatus for like the past, what, four weeks? Uh, Work-life balance was in the work category and not the life balance category. Uh, some major projects for my day job and trying to get stuff done out here for some customer projects. Um, so we're going to talk about what I'm working on, projects I have that's in the hopper. Um, we're going to talk about sanders and what I, my process that I use to do sanding and what's motivating me this week. Stay tuned. Let's talk about the bar build. It's uh, come a long way since the last time I showed it. Uh, I got the Varathane, which is a Rust-Oleum product, the Weathered Gray. And what this does is, in the future I'll probably spray it because I think it'll go on more even. It was a little rough this big of a project to do it with a brush. Uh, but this weathers the wood, so it does a, I don't know, some sort of magic in a can. Uh, I've got it right here magic in a can and it just ages that wood in two hours literally you'll, you'll paint it on it looks wet and then two hours later it starts to turn this gray uh, i got one more pass of light sanding just to even out some of the color and texture uh, i don't think you really have any control because of the lighter spots i hit again with some more of it and it, it didn't change the uh the color tone of it so it's not something that could just be built upon it's just you know you're going to get what you get with the wood uh, luckily, it's in some areas that you can't really see, unless the cabinet's open. But I think once I do the light sanding and all that, it'll even it all out and look good. Especially when I put the uh, the finished coat on. I uh, still have the cabinet doors to finish. Got them started right here. So I got the uh, rails and styles cut. Did all that on the table saw. And I just got to cut the quarter, uh, the quarter inch panels to go inside and then cap them off, get them stained. I still have to measure this one uh, to get the right dimensions. And then I have two drawers to build, uh, which shouldn't be too bad. And then this is a false face. So I just got to add the piece and then clip it in. Uh, they didn't want uh, for it to hinge down or anything. This is just a bar. So we have that done. So we should have this done this week. I'm gonna to try to deliver this to the customer on Sunday. So let's talk about the top. So we talked about the cabinet. Let's talk about their countertop. They, uh, they wanted something different for their bar. So they went with eight quarter walnut. Uh, this is three different pieces that glued up that look nice together. This one was a little darker until I sanded it and it kind of got lighter. So I might have to put uh, some tinted Danish oil on it to even out this color, but we'll see how it looks after I put a, a coat of uh, finish on it. I used West Systems Epoxy to fill the one knot hole. Um, I could have probably cut it out where it wasn't there, but I kind of like the looks of it. Uh, the grain pattern is really nice right there. So I didn't want to take the character away from the top because it is wood and we want to make sure it looks like wood. So this one I'm going to finish with a new product that I'm trying. It's not new, it's been around since 1910. Uh, it's a two step, so I'm going to put a satin finish on. It's the water locks. So I do two coats of this and then I'll probably do two to four coats of the actual sealer and finish. Um, this is the product a lot of folks use for actual countertops and homes. So I decided that I can't go wrong with using something that other people use to make countertops since this is my first countertop. But it was, uh, it went together, glue pretty good. It's, it's heavy. It's going to be, I got to trim down the edges still. I got to chamfer the ed ends. And the, uh, the most nerve wracking part is I have to very carefully cut a 12 inch square hole in the middle of this. Um, so that's, that's kind of nerve wracking because if I screw up, I gotta go buy a whole bunch of expensive eight quarter walnut and do this again. Uh, I thought about trying to frame it in and then putting stuff around it, but that just didn't seem to work. I'd have to do a lot more cuts and I don't think it would look to, looked as good and natural so that is that let's talk about sanders so i was sitting there sanding this today actually and i was like 
you know, there's a lot of people use sanders, a lot of people use several different types of sanders, people use card scrapers. So I'm just gonna run you through my process that I use. Uh, forgive the sweat, it is 89 degrees in the shop today. It's gone down two degrees in the past 10 minutes, so that's nice. But, uh, so I usually start off, especially on big slabs like this, I'll start off with the belt sander, because inevitably, I always get at least one board that's kind of gotten skewed uh, when I clamped it, whether I've used calls or not, I always get just a little bit of a lip. Uh, I thought about using the card scraper, but seriously, it was like an eighth of an inch, if that, uh, just knocked it down with the, uh, I think, 120 grit on the belt sander. This one frame? Yes. So I just use a basic uh, skill, cheapy sander. Uh, with uh, this, I usually don't go anything below or above 120 grit. It's just what I leave on it all the time. So once I'm done with that, and I do both sides, uh, you know you're not going to see one side, but I still do both sides just to make sure it's even. Uh, I'll switch to my random orbital sander. I've got the Bosch. Uh, it's a six speed. Uh, I love this thing. Um, I looked at a lot, and for the money, I don't, I, this has not uh, failed me. Uh, the pads are easily findable at Menards, Home Depot, uh, whereas other ones aren't. So if I, I had to replace, replace the pad once, but I've got, I probably got 300 hours of sanding on this. So I will go up to 220 with the random orbital sander and I'll hit that really good. And then no matter how high in the grid, I could go 320, I could go whatever. It still seems like I have scratches in my wood. So I went ahead and picked up the Bosch finish sander and this just vibrates and I have 320 on this all the time. And I use that just to finish it out. And it seems to take all the scratches out. And then I'll use this in between coats. So when I'm doing poly coats, uh, I'll use some steel wool sometimes, but I'll also hit it with this after the first couple coats, just to make sure I'm smooth and it, and it gets that nice finish. So that is how I do my sanding. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will, re I will reply. And if there's anything you want to see in future shows, put it in the comments as well and I will try to work it in and answer your questions. We talked about the bar, we went through our sanding demo, our standing talk. Uh, what's next? So I've got, I've got a couple customers that are lined up. I have one customer who saw the pictures of the chaotic herringbone table. Uh, so they went ahead and commissioned me to build another one. I just ordered the hairpin legs for that. And I've got to go get some cherry and maple because I'm almost out of those. And I'm going to have to get a, probably 10 board feet to get this table done. This table is going to lead into other projects for that customer. Um, they wanted to do it all at once, but for budget reasons, they decided just to start with the coffee table. But we're going to do a coffee table. We're going to do a full couch table bar type thing. So we'll sit behind the couch and you can eat and drink at it while watching the football games. Um, you know, they're Iowa Hawkeye fans. I, I don't follow that stuff. Uh, I said uh, Iowa Hawkeyes and I live in Husker land, so I'm, I might get shot when this video comes out. Um, if I do, it was probably my cameraman. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a Nebraska fan. I don't know if he is. Are you a Nebraska fan? Yes. All right. <laughs> this is an informal show. We're not, we're not professionals. Breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> uh, I have a, uh, another customer who was interested in the coffee table build. Uh, went decided to go another way, but she called me back and said, I need shoe storage and a bench. So we're doing a rustic shoe storage bench for her. Uh, probably have that done. It's gonna be a real quick build once I get some area cleared out so I can get working on that. It's just gonna be uh, dimen dimensional pine. I'll probably put a plan out for it. Uh, it'll be out there for free. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how much time I have. That's a time-consuming process, but it's 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 on my goal list to start doing some plans. And then we've got five or six signs uh, that are commissioned that we're just waiting for deposits or the pay uh, to get those designed, and you know the wife to get back from her business trip. And we are going to shoot a pilot episode of a, a show idea I have in my head 
So look forward to that. I don't know when that'll be done, but it's, it's gonna be kind of cool. Um, you know, I get inspired by HGTV and, and all those shows, so I'm gonna try my hand at making my own because it's, I haven't seen it done on YouTube yet. So that's all I've got in the works and Okay. <laughs> well, I did get some new tools since the last time we had a workshop Wednesday. Uh, actually, quite a few new tools. I got some new Craig jigs. I got a Veritas uh, auto uh, thing for my scrapers, and I bought a professional series planer. So none of that is ready to be shown. None of that is ready to be talked about. Um, I've been busy in the shop, so I have to build some shop carts for the planer. Uh, right now it's sitting in the dining room. I thought about setting it up on the dining room table and running some wood through it and sending the uh, video to the wife because uh, she's out of town on business. I thought that'd be really funny, but then I'd have to clean it up and no, I don't feel like doing that. Uh, going on to the next thing, so what's motivating me? You know, I've, I've been on a four week, five week hiatus from this. Um, one, I kind of lost my motivation and gain motivation in other item, other areas. So one of the things that I've made is a major life change. For the past two years, I've been battling a pinched nerve in my back that a year ago I could barely walk. I uh, couldn't stand for more than two minutes without being in excruciating pain. Found a new treatment plan with a chiropractor. It's been working. I've been slowly getting back on my feet. And I'm to the point where I had to just push through the rest of the pain. So I started going back to the gym I've been going pretty much every night, uh, five to six times a week, and been doing that for the past week or so. And you know, nice to, nice to uh, report that the pain is almost virtually gone in my back. Uh, so I think that was the next step to get me 100% over it, which gets me out in the shop more because I'm not lying in a chair with an ice pack and, and doing therapy and trying to stretch it out and try to live a normal life. Uh, but since I have been laid up on a few few days, I've been watching a lot of vlogs, a lot of motivational videos, uh, stuff that's motivated me to go through. And I'm going to redo my website. Uh, I've got a lot of, we, could, we do a lot of signs. Uh, the wife does most of those and they take up a lot of space on the website. So you don't get to see the stuff that I'm building. You don't get to see some of the home decor items that I've built. It's, you get, it just gets overrun with all the signs that we offer. So talked with the wife and we decided that we are just going to offer custom signs. We're not going to sell uh, any pre-made stuff or have any pre-select phrases. We'll have some pictures of, for ideas. We might have a drop down. You could choose from some of the common phrases that we sell. Uh, but I'm not going to have an inventory of those signs. We're just going to do custom made. So I'm going to go redo the website so that it looks a lot better and it's a lot more clean. You can see a lot more of the products that I built. Uh, with that said, those, those signs that we do have an inventory of that we don't sell at our craft shows and trying to keep those around, I am going to move the stuff that's already made over to an Etsy store and I'm going to try to see how I can integrate. I use Shopify as my platform and see if I can do some stuff with Shopify to automate the Etsy. And I'll probably talk about that on another workshop Wednesday. But that's, that's what I've been working on and trying to get that going. Um, so what, what's one of the things that keeps me motivated is, you know, one, I'm, I'm almost pain free. That's, that's a huge motivator. So that gets me out to the shop, that gets me playing with the kids, keeps me in the right frame of mind. Um, so you just gotta find that one passion, you know, woodworking, computers, your kids, and, and put some focus on that. Uh, but not all your focus because you'll get burned out. Make sure you got stuff that will go, that you could flip between, get those projects rolling, have a couple going. Uh, you know, I worked quite a few hours the past month for the day job, which made me tired and I didn't get out here. But when I did get out here, it was, it was my stress relief and I just had to push myself from the recliner to get out here. So just, just keep pushing yourself. Uh, just, you know, take that real quick second and go, oh, I don't want to do this and then just go do it. And I guarantee you you'll feel better because I know I do. Um, 
So that, that is pretty much what I've been working on. Uh, if you like the content that you're seeing, I know it's been away for a while. I lost some subscribers, but go ahead and subscribe. Um, I'm gonna be doing this more religiously again. I've got, I've got projects that are coming. I've got lots of work that's coming. I've got a lot of ideas on how to grow my business that I'm gonna share. Uh, that might help you if you're you know another entrepreneur like me or heck if you're one of my potential customers you know it might motivate you to call me and say hey yeah i want that table you were talking about that you were designing for somebody so go ahead and subscribe keep up to date with the content hit the bell so you'll get notified when i drop new content uh we're i'm going to try to get more content videos out of builds uh, i'm going to be focusing on stuff that i offer in the website just so I can use that as a marketing piece as well. But if you're a baker, then you'll, you can still see some of the techniques that I'm using. And I'm gonna use Workshop Wednesdays to go over some of the you know tips and tricks, some tool reviews, and some of the more woodworking generalized stuff. So again, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week.